Great. Well, welcome back, folks. This is the House Corrections and Institutions Committee. Again, it's January 12th. <clears throat> it's our 1030 meeting. We're going to spend the next um, couple of minutes with, um, well, really for the next half hour or so. We're looking at bill introductions. We've had two bills that have been introduced to us, 488 and 487. Um, we're starting with House Bill 487. We have the uh, person, the Representative McFawn, who introduced this piece of legislation, and it deals with uh, the uh, use of the Windsor Correctional Facility. So, Representative McFawn is with us, and I will turn it over to you, um, member, and if you could just identify yourself for the record. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Representative Francis McFawn, representing Barrytown. Um, thanks for inviting me uh, to talk about this bill and, and walk you through it. Um, this is a bill that um, deals with where we're going to provide appropriate services to Vermont justice-involved youth. Um, very quickly, why is the bill necessary? Uh, the facility we previously served justice-involved youth in Vermont was called Woodside. It's been closed to determine that it was inadequate to house these and serve these youth. It was also decided that it was appropriate for the Department of Children and Families to send these youth out of state to receive those services uh, until a permanent solution could be found in, in Vermont. Uh, we've been sending justice involved youth out of state to receive services for several years, as you well know. Uh, families uh, don't have in-person access with these youth unless they travel out of state. And sometimes in many cases, it's a hardship for that family to do that. In order to provide better outcomes uh, for these youth, the Department of Children and Families over the past couple of years has been working to find a permanent solution to, see, uh, to serve these youth uh, in the state. It was finally decided that DCF would work with an organization uh, by the name of Beckett that owned a building Newbury, in Newbury, Vermont. Uh, plans to retrofit that building uh, were drawn up and presented to the town of Newbury uh, for their approval. Um, the concept and uh, the plans to renovate that building were rejected by the appropriate boards in that town. Um, it's my understanding now that um, that decision is being appealed. So it's my opinion that we have spent enough money and time on this very specific solution to that ongoing problem of providing, finding a facility to provide the services to these to these uh, youth. Um, there are some other problems with that uh, location of that building uh, in Newbury uh, in terms of supportive services to such a building, like healthcare, hospital, of our similar healthcare facility, law enforcement uh, response. So I think we need to stop spending money uh, on the lease of this building, its renovations and legal fees to appeal the decision of the town of Newbury and get these youth, in, youth into a secure facility in Vermont, at least on a temporary basis, where you can they can receive treatment that we all know they need. We already have a facility that was used by the Corrections Department to house inmates in Windsor, Vermont. We could stabilize the delivery service system for these youth, at least on a temporary basis there. The support services problem would be essentially solved because Windsor has its own police department and Mount Escutney Hospital is close to that facility. Of course, we'd have to look at later on compensation for the, for the town of Windsor in both of those areas and, and that hospital. Since we already own this facility, uh, my opinion, let's fit it up staff it with state employees and use it to serve these youth, youth at least on a temporary basis, instead of spending money uh, to lease and fit up a building 
we don't own in a town that doesn't want it and has been, not, has been denied the permits um, associated with that project. That's some of the reasons why I work with the Vermont State Employees Association to develop and submit H-487. Um, quickly going through H-487, section one simply um, gives the Department of Children Families um, 30 days to start uh, fitting up uh, a 10 bin facility in the South East State Correctional Facility in Windsor and use that as an emergency uh, facility for these justice involved youth. And that facility, after it's fit up, um, would, would, would continue to be the facility where these, these youth are served until a permanent solution is found. Section B, uh, subsection B, um, comes up with an amount of money to, for that fit up. Um, it's my understanding that uh, the money that is here is the amount of money that was already uh, allocated to the department to do the fit up on the Beckett building. I'm saying reallocate that money in this particular bill uh, to fit up the Southeast State Correctional Facility to serve these youth. Um, section uh, two of the, of the bill um, allows the Agency of Human Services about a year uh, to develop a plan for, the per for a permanent 10 bed facility secured facility to serve these youth in the state of Vermont that's owned and operated by the state of Vermont. Um, who knows? Um, the Southeast State Correctional Facility could even end up being that permanent facility. Um, the last section, section three, uh, says that this act will take effect on passage. And that essentially is the reasons why I put the bill in and what the bill is all about. Thank you, Tapper, Representative McFawn. Um, I appreciate you introducing this piece of legislation. It does get the conversation going. Um, as we well know, the Beckett proposal is under appeal. Um, and um, there are a lot of conversations happening throughout the legislature on how do we work, how do we move forward in the interim and how do we move forward on a permanent basis? So I appreciate the bill to get the conversation going. There is a tremendous amount of work happening in the other body with Senator Sears uh, working on this, as well as Senator Benning working on this. Um, so Topper, I've got two questions. Has your committee house Human Services been looking at this issue yet this session? Have you had any conversations? I don't not, want to put you on the spot, but yeah, I'm just curious. I'm not, I'm not representing the committee at all, Madam Chair. Um, we have not uh, taken it up this year. Um, we, we have discussed this. We, we've been involved with, with Woodside and the shutting down of it and all of that, but we have not brought it up and I'm not representing the committee at all. Uh, on this. Later on, um, the committee probably will get involved. Um, my, if I was a, a betting uh, man, I would say that probably uh, the Senate is going to take the lead on this thing. I agree. But, but that doesn't mean that, that we shouldn't get involved. And I think we will. It's, it's, a, it's an issue of all, already all of us have been involved in. But uh, um, I, I, I'm going to testify, I think it's tomorrow afternoon, in the Senate. And is that Senate institutions? Uh, yes. Okay. okay. I mean, this has been uh, percolating out there. <clears throat> Some folks have mentioned using the uh, correctional facility as a temporary. Um, it would need some fit up. 
Uh, the 3.1 million, if you remember folks, we worked with appropriations committee last year. Uh, the money comes out of the operating budget of DCF. It's not money that came out of the capital bill. It was DCF general fund dollars to go towards uh, the fit up of the facility, the Beckett facility in Newbury. Our work last year at this time was working with House Appropriations Committee to make sure that BGS had a role in the development of that fit up for the Beckett proposal. So the money did not go to BGS, the money went to DCF. So this bill here <clears throat> would redirect those monies to BGS. And I'm assuming BGS would be the one to really look at the fit up costs uh, of the Windsor facility for that. Um, and then your second part of your bill is to really start putting in place uh, a, a study, feasibility study, and how we move forward on a permanent secure facility for justice involved youth. So it's a two step process here. Mem uh, committee questions? I don't, I don't have a question, but just think they might even learn how to plant gardens. <laughs> the greenhouse is still there. We haven't yeah. moved it yet. Uh, Scott? Thank you. And um, thank you, Topper, uh, for bringing this. Uh, I think it's an interesting idea that I have thought about as well. But I'm, I'm wondering what the town of Windsor thinks about it. Have you, do you have any? I, I, I don't know. Uh, all I know is the towns of the town of Windsor at one point in time, uh, my wife is from that town. So I spent a lot of time there. Um, they, uh, they had a prison there. Um, they've had this facility for several years. And um, in, in terms of uh, permitting and all that, uh, I, I would think that all of those things um, I mean, the facility exists right now. We've, we're paying to mothball that facility. And uh, I think we should put it to use. And I, I think this is a good way to get this discussion going and, and get the services provided to these youth. It's, it's been too long uh, that we've been um, going back and forth on this. Yeah. Well, I, I we, need to, we need to get something done. No, I, I completely agree. And, and I won't say I know a lot about this, but it certainly seems like a good fit to me from what little I know so far. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Uh, Kurt and then Sarah. Kurt? Uh, yes, I, it's, a, it's an interesting idea, um, Representative McFawn. And, and when, when we visit, we visited the facility down there, and maybe you have too. And when people think of that facility, they think of the, the, the main building and the condition that it's in, but we didn't visit the, the, I don't know what they referred to it as the cottage or something up in the corner. And there, there were other buildings that, that we didn't see that, that truly might be able to be uh, renovated or reconstructed that would take, that would handle this. Um, I don't know about 10 beds, that, that's a kind of a small, the small cottage up there that they were using, but something along those lines certainly would seem possible. The only, uh, it's, it's an awful lot of acres to have for just one small building, but as an emergency solution, it's certainly something to look at. And I agree totally that we need to do something because having those kids, youth in emergency rooms is not good for all, yeah. all, the, all the reasons we already know. So I appreciate you bringing this forward. Thanks. Yeah. Sarah? Hi, Representative McFawn. It's so nice to see you. Um, and I just appreciate um, that you your care um, with this, because this is an issue that our, this committee has been, since I've been here, this is my fourth year, we've been uh, focused on this. And I'm just curious, you mentioned um, that you developed the bill with VSEA. And I, I know that one of the questions that always comes up in our committee, like we deal with the, the bricks and mortar, but a piece of the thinking always has to be about workforce, like who is available to work at facilities in proximity to workforce. And I'm just curious without getting too much into the weeds and I'm not, I, but just curious to hear, we haven't had um, 
an operating facility there now for a number of years. And so just curious if VSEA weighed in on um, or had any thinking about availability of workforce to staff such a temporary facility or maybe permanent, who knows? Well, they, I, they did not, um, they did not uh, lead me to believe that a workforce couldn't be put there. Let me, let me put it that. I mean, I didn't ask them specifically, do you have people waiting in the wings to do it? Um, uh, I know that there were people that were working at Woodside. I don't know what they're doing now. Um, uh, there are people uh, that work in some of the designated agencies now that are ending up in the emergency rooms with some of these people. Uh, I, 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 you know, I can't answer that question because I didn't ask that question. What I said, uh, do, do you feel that staff could be made available? And they said, certainly. Well, that's, that's good information. It didn't um, seem to be a problem. My understanding of, is some people are sitting in emergency rooms, emergency rooms now with uh, justice involved youth until they can figure out what to do with them. It's not a good situation. It's, it's not a good situation at all. And some of yeah. it is, you know, I think we have youth who are in emergency rooms who are not all, who are justice involved, but also who are, who need other kinds of beds. Cause Woodside right. was specifically only for pe kids who had been adjudicated. Um, we hear a lot about, you know, youth, um, in crisis, mental health crisis. And I think it's important to make a distinction between the two, the right. two different groups. And you're in your, you and your committee, you do, you are very well versed in this, but it's more yeah. for the folks who might be listening in that I say that. So I just appreciate you bringing this forward. Um, and, and um, I know that we're, we're going to be um, hearing there's a report due to our committee from a working group that was looking at Windsor too. So exactly. thank you. Exactly. I know about that working group as well. If you notice, um, the uh, the first section one, the dead the the deadline is is really quick to get this thing going on, and that is the reaction to the as the chair said, this is a this is an immediate problem that really needs needs to take be taken care of quickly. Mm -hmm. That's why that that uh, that timeline is so so strict and yeah, that might be a too strict a timeline for bgs to do the work for fit up because it would be bgs doing the work yeah they may not madam chair they may not get it done in 30 days what i meant by it was get it started within okay. 30 days so that it it we can get it done as quick as possible okay so i know that linda had her hand up and then her hand went down so i don't know um, so, Topper, Sarah alluded to this. Tomorrow morning at nine o'clock, we are going to hear that report of um, we had a task force or uh, committee set up to look uh, over the summer and fall for possible uses of the Windsor Correctional Facility going forward. It was made up of the Regional Planning Commission, the chair, executive director, or former executive director, the Mount of Scutney Regional Commission was chair of that. We had Agency of Agriculture, we had Fish and Wildlife on there, we had VHCB, we had members from the town of Windsor. Um, and they have submitted their report. <laughs> And they're going to be presenting that to us tomorrow. So if you would like to get a Zoom invite to our committee meeting for tomorrow morning at nine o'clock, you'd be more than welcome. And we can have Phil send you or Julie a Zoom invite for that if you'd like to Zoom into our committee to hear that report. It's at nine. I, I, would, I, I would like to, I would like to hear that. Um, uh, I'd like to have a copy of that report as well. It, it, do you have the report now, Madam Chair? Yes, we do. I'm wondering, Phil, if you'd be willing to send that report to Julie Tucker, and then Julie can make that available to you. 
Sure. Does that work that way, or is it better if Phil sends it directly to you, Tucker? If he sends it directly to me, it's fine. Okay. Because I, I want to reemphasize, I'm not representing the committee right. on this. And, you can walk down the road and hand it to you, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> or go and knock on his door. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Might be quicker. <laughs> that, that was a revelation that, <laughs> that last night I got. Oh, small world. Yeah. Um, but would you be able to come in at 9 o'clock tomorrow? And well, I, I, I can come in. Yeah, we're, we're dealing with uh, that Proposition 5 tomorrow morning in the committee. Okay. It's pretty <sighs> well you know I, if you can't can make it in uh, if you can't make it in you can always look on the youtube yeah that's what i mean one one way or the other if, okay. if you send me the 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 link um with starting this at 9 15 um maybe uh maybe i can look at the the youtube of, of we have a copy of what goes on and maybe I can look at that at, in the evening. Okay, okay. Because this is pretty, I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to see what that report says. Okay, so Phil will send, send it to your email, legislative Good. email, and uh, we'll go from there. Any okay, further thank questions? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Topper. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too. I know. Um...